Hi and welcome. Something slightly unusual here in that I very rarely look at two different topics in one video, but at Entry Level 3 Functional Skills Maths, we only take a brief look at these two topics, so it seemed a good idea to add them together. First, we're going to have a look at angles. We're going to define what an angle is and how they vary in size. And then we're going to move on to look at a range of different shapes and check out what a line of symmetry is. So let's start with angles and we'll have a definition. Really all an angle is, is something that tells you how large a corner is. So if we have two straight lines, such as the one in the top diagram here, and they come together and meet in a point, then this space here in between the two lines is the angle. And an angle can change in size depending on how wide apart the two lines are. So in this particular example at the top here, the two lines come together to quite a narrow point, which gives us a small angle. Whereas at the bottom of the page, we have two more lines which also meet, but the lines are much wider apart, so that gives us a larger angle. Here we have two examples of shapes that have angles inside them. So the top shape here, the triangle, has a large angle at the top and two smaller ones in the bottom corners here. The shape at the bottom has one, two, three, four, five angles. There is one special angle that we need to look out for and it's called a right angle. And we find it here on the corner of a square. In fact, a right angle is an angle that would make up part of a square. Now you'll notice on previous pages that when I filled in an angle, I did it with a circular line. The easy way to spot a right angle is that we do not put a circular line. We fill it in with a little square. That's a right angle. Let's move on then to lines of symmetry, and that means another definition. A line of symmetry is a line that you can draw through a shape so that it cuts that shape exactly in half so the two sides of the line are identical shapes but the opposite way around. If that sounds a little confusing, let's have a look at the diagram here. Here we have a blue triangle. Now, if you take a look at the red line that I've drawn through it, you can see that it divides the shape into two halves. And this half of the shape here is exactly the same as that half, but it is a reverse image. And a good way to test whether or not a line is a line of symmetry is to fold the shape in half. So if I were to fold this triangle in half, along the red line, this half here would fold exactly on top of the other half. That means the red line is a line of symmetry. Let's have a look at one or two more. The shape at the top of the page here is a square. Now what we need to try to find out is how many lines of symmetry the shape has. And that means how many different ways can we fold it exactly in half? Well, the one you might spot first would be if I were to draw a line straight down the center of the square so that we can see that if I fold the two sides together, they would cover each other exactly. And there is also a second line of symmetry across the sides here because I could fold the top half on to the bottom half. Let's look further. Are there any other ways I can fold this square in half? Well, yes, there are, because I could fold it from corner to corner that way, and the two halves, again, are identical. They would fold on top of each other, and the same is true for a line going from the other two corners. The square would fold in half. So, in fact, a square has four different lines of symmetry, one down the center, one across the centre and one across from corner to corner in either direction. Let's see how that compares with a rectangle at the bottom here. So I'm looking for lines of symmetry. Well, once again, I can draw a line straight down the centre 
dividing the rectangle exactly in half so that I can fold one half on top of the other. And the same is true for the line across the centre. So I can fold the top half exactly onto the bottom half. However, if I draw a line from corner to corner, I can now see that if I were to fold this shape along the line, this half here would not fold exactly on top of the bottom half. Therefore, a rectangle doesn't have a line of symmetry across from corner to corner. And this is what you need to look at. You may be given a range of shapes. I'll put two more on the next page. And you need to decide by actually looking at the shape how you are able to fold it in half. And here are two more shapes uh, where you might be asked to find lines of symmetry. Perhaps you'd like to pause this video now and have a look for yourself and then continue when you've decided. In fact, looking at the top shape, the arrow, the only way that you might fold this exactly in half would be if you were to take a line from the point and draw it to the back of the arrow so that the top folds on the bottom. And with the bottom shape here, the only line of symmetry that we have is one that divides it exactly in two from the top to the bottom. I think a good way to practice looking at lines of symmetry is to find some shapes or maybe draw some shapes on a piece of paper and then try turning the paper round and looking at it from different angles. Sometimes you can see a line of symmetry that you might otherwise have missed. I hope you found that useful. Please, as always, do subscribe to the channel and hopefully I will see you again in further videos. Thank you.